Today we've got a briefcase style portable power station with a built-in solar panel to test out from Browie and it's their C600 so in this video we'll be taking a look at it and running a few tests to see how it performs and before we dive in be sure to give this video a thumbs up and if you like the video and you want to support my channel you can use the affiliate links down below and for full disclosure Browie did send this out for me to review but I will give you my honest feedback about it and also be comparing its performance against a few other power stations so you can get a better idea how it stacks up to its competitors. This is definitely the most unique power station that we've ever looked at on the channel and it's a pretty heavy setup weighing in just shy of 25 pounds and the carrying handle on top makes it a lot more convenient. Inside we've got a 614.4 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery and this is a long lasting battery technology rated for over 3500 charge cycles. The first thing we'll check out is the folding solar panel and to access it all you need to do is flip it up and open and it folds open just like a laptop and you can adjust the angle of the panel very easily which is nice and the panel itself is pretty small at only 30 watts and we'll be testing it out to see what kind of speeds we can get. There is a built in kickstand underneath and this is going to help you find an optimal angle to position the panel. On the side of the power station you'll find a display screen and this LCD CD will give you the battery life broken down into 20% increments, the input and the output speeds, and which ports are on. And this is pretty much what we're used to seeing on most modern power stations. Beneath that, there's a button to turn on and off the display. Next to that, there's a port cover, which protects a 65 watt USB-C port and two quick charge 3.0 USB type A's. Beneath that, we've got another cover protecting our DC input for charging and two DC outputs. At the bottom, we've got a single AC output and a button to turn it on and off. And this is a 110 volt with a 600 watt max. And then there's also a car port. Now we're gonna jump into some testing to help you get a better idea of the max AC output. And we're gonna try to run around the 600 watt mark. And to do this, we're gonna be using a hair dryer. And at the level that it's on, it's right around 300 watts. So now we're gonna step it up a level, which pushed us to over 600 watts to right around the 650 watt mark, which is higher than advertised, which is quite good. I did try stepping up to the next level, which did overload the power station. But when I turned it back on, everything was working fine. And we were able to return to the 650 ish watt level. So overall, this unit has done a good job of living up to the advertised specs so far. All right, we've got the battery charged back up again, and now we're gonna perform a capacity test, and we'll see how close we can get to the 614 watt hour stated. And in order to test this, we're gonna plug in a power meter, and we're gonna run the AC output at around 300 watts, so roughly half of the 600 continuous watts it's rated for. And when the battery is drained, we'll see a watt hour total at the end, and this is gonna give us a good idea of what the true capacity is. So now I'm gonna plug in the small hair dryer, and I'm gonna drain the battery back down to zero percent and at the end the power meter is reading around 567 watt hours which is 92 percent of what the power station claimed which is really good and it's actually better than most of the other power stations that we've tested out on the channel so far all right so now that we've drained the battery with the continuous ac output test we're going to do a charging speed test to see how long it takes to go from zero percent to 100 percent charge and now that we've got everything set up and we've started to charge it's 8:43 and we'll keep an eye on it over the next few hours. And at the start, the charging speeds have jumped to about 110 watts. Charging ended at around 350, so in total, the time was about seven hours and seven minutes, which is kind of slow considering the capacity was relatively small. But if you're not in a rush, then you can just charge it overnight and those speeds won't really matter that much. Another test I like to do is a fridge runtime test. So basically I'm just gonna unplug the fridge from my wall and plug it into the power station and see how long it can run for to give you an idea of what it's capable of. And I'm excited to see what this guy can do. And I plugged the fridge in at about 7.15 a.m. in the morning and it lasted until about 11.44 a.m. So the total runtime was about four hours and 30 minutes. Now we're gonna do a few different solar panel tests, including one with the built-in 30 watt panel and another with their 120 watt panel, which we checked out in a YouTube short a few weeks earlier. Anyways, we'll start off with the built-in panel and this one is really easy to set up and there is an adjustable kickstand, but due to the position of the sun in our sky, our best option is actually gonna be just to let the panel lay flat. And now we're all set up and we're able to register speeds right around 21 watts, which is shy of the 30 watts advertised, but not too far off. And the typical range I see on advertised versus tested specs on solar panels is about 20 to 30% low on average. And this one is a little further outside that range, but you might get slightly better results depending on your conditions. Now we're gonna test out their 120 watt briefcase style folding panel, and this can be easily connected to the power station. And once we've got it all set up and plugged in, 
we registered right around 110 watts in total which is about 40 watts shy of the 150 watts we should be getting from the setup but overall you do still get pretty decent charging speeds from this combination overall i think the c600 is an appealing option for those of you looking for a compact power station with the convenience of built-in solar it is a relatively inexpensive unit from a cost per watt hour perspective which is interesting considering the built-in solar aspect but the solar panel will really only be sufficient to help you top off small devices and if you need more power you will have to supplement with an additional panel. If you want to see how it compares to some other power stations that I've looked at on the channel, you can check out the database link to down below. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're interested in either the power station or the solar panel, check out the links down below.